Welcome, I'm so glad you're joining me. For those of you who are just starting, the Orca Swim Show is a weekly show where I bring both information about how the brain works when embarking on change, especially something that is fearful, and we take it to the lab of the swimming pool. After 30 years of teaching in the pool, it's time to hop out of the water and share how the learning works in and out of the water in the same way. The water is a perfect lab to test the learning process because you get fast and immediate feedback along with very satisfying rewards. When you focus on the needs of the brain-body connection and not just a list of skills, then you can obtain lasting and satisfying results. Our pool is a warm 92. Let's hop in and go from regret and missing out to action and freedom. How are you? I'm good. You yeah. look beautiful talking about <laughs> hair today. Oh my gosh, you look amazing. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> I'm so not used to seeing people's hair. <laughs> I know, right? Because we're always like covered up. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Swimming, yeah. right? <laughs> yeah. Well, thanks for being on here. Um, I'm just going to introduce you real quick. Uh, and because um, I am recording it and I'll edit it down a little bit, like this little piece that I'm saying right now. <laughs> <laughs> gotcha. But um, welcome. This is Keisha, who took our class two months ago, three months yeah. ago, two months ago. Mm -hmm. Nice. And um, I asked her to be on with us today to be able to share her story. And um, she also has more information that I think people want to know because she knows about hair. <laughs> so that's the <laughs> other thing, I, reason why I wanted to have her on because that is one big thing that holds people back um, from coming out to swim. But um, Keisha, would you mind first just sharing about your swimming story, maybe before getting to Orca? And Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So I like to travel. So I like to travel to places that are beautiful and most of the time they're on the water. So mm. you know, you're seeing these amazing things and you're in this amazing water. Um, and I wasn't necessarily aware that I had a strong fear of water. I think it was just wanting to be more comfortable and the classes that I had taken were really focused on technique and they weren't focusing on the fear aspect. Um, and so once I saw this class, I realized like, oh shoot, you are actually a little afraid of water and not being in control of your surroundings and, you know, the scary stories that you hear all the time about water and all that type of stuff. Um, and just learning how to be comfortable in water was a really big thing for me. So when I saw that this class was really focused on fear, that's what really stuck out to me um, because I was expecting to understand more of my fears while also learning a lot of the technique stuff. Um, and I think now my relationship with water is completely different because I understand it's about being comfortable. And so only pushing yourself to the level where you're like, okay, I can handle this. I can get with this and not going so far where you're completely out of your comfort zone. Yeah. Yeah. Good. That was good. Yeah, I like that you said too, um, I think it's common with a lot of people, that sense of, I don't really feel like I'm afraid, mm -hmm. but why am I not push just going forward? <laughs> yeah, why am yeah. I not just doing it? <laughs> yeah. yeah, and sometimes people don't identify with that word of being afraid, but we just that, I know something's missing there. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. And it's interesting because I, you know, you see little kids and they jump in the water and they have no idea how to swim, but they're fine with just being like, Psh, I'm going for it. And I'm just like, oh my God, the fear would take me under if I ever did that. And so I think once I saw how I was holding myself back, um, it was really an eye opening thing because then at least you knew what to fix. Right. Right. Yes. <laughs> to get to the heart of it. Moving mm -hmm. my arms and legs in a particular way is not going to fix it. <laughs> <laughs> not at all. <laughs> no. Yes. Yes. I recently had somebody who, you know, he's been working on, really it's the mindset and understanding how the mind works and how fear works. And he's been working on it. And he said, how about if I try a life jacket? And I said, absolutely. You know, life jackets are great. Go for it. And we did some work with the life jacket on and he said, and we were talking again about the mindset and the fear. And I said, um, 
so how are your thoughts there? And he's like, yeah, it still is about the thoughts, isn't it? It's not about (laughs) whether or not I sink. Mm -hmm. It's still about my thoughts. I still have to be in charge of my thoughts and understand what's going on there, even though I know nothing's going to happen physically. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So anyways, good. Well, the other reason why, um, I wanted to have you on, not just to share your story, but um, like I said before, a lot of people, there's a lot of things and a lot of layers of what gets in our way of coming out to learn to swim. And I mean, it's things like, um, I don't want to be embarrassed. I don't want to wear a swimsuit. I don't know what to do with my hair. Right. (laughs) And that was one that I was really hoping to get your insight on and to talk to people about how did you take care of your hair? Mm-hmm. What other hair tips do you have for people? Yeah, yeah, I'd love to hear about that. Certainly. So I think swimming in hair is kind of one of those things that is just difficult to figure out. Um, I myself even thought like, okay, so you're going to be swimming for this amount of days. Like, what are you going to do with your hair? What is actually going to happen? Um, you know, swim caps are helpful. They're definitely a helpful tool. They're not the end-all, be-all tool. Um, I don't care what the company has told you or what type of wrap, whatever. Um, if you are swimming and you are like fully submerging yourself into water, pressure and gravity is just going to <laughs> make it get in. Um, that's just kind of the reality of it. And so I think I just had to be okay with the water getting on my scalp and just getting into my hair. Um, So what I did during the swim lessons um, in particular is I wore just my hair in straight back braids um, because I wear wigs all the time anyway. So I was fine with just saying, okay, just you're not wearing a wig right now. So your braids are just going to get wet. Um, I did have like a hair appointment probably a few days after class just because I knew it was going to be a lot of chlorine in my hair because it was a I think three days or four days, however long class was. Um, But, you know, when I'm traveling, I normally will either have my hair in braids or I just bring my shampoo and conditioner because the thing is, it's not bad that the chlorine or the salt water, the fresh water, whatever it is, gets in your hair. What makes it bad is when you let it sit in your hair Mm. and it starts to do its drying process and stuff like that. So like when I was in the swim lessons and I have my hair in braids, um, I made sure to like oil my scalp every day because I wasn't going to be washing it every day. Um, But I was really making sure like it just wasn't drying out and I think that's the biggest thing that people miss about getting you know going to swim lessons and stuff is that it's not just about your hair getting wet it's about your hair getting dried out and that over time can definitely be very damaging um so in my you know professional life I'm a wig maker so I know a lot of my clients also ask me like okay can I swim in my wigs what should I do I wouldn't suggest that, honestly. I don't do that, one, because why? Just put a swim cap on, you know? You're in the water, put a swim cap on. Like, that's literally what it's for. It's kind of like you wouldn't go to swim lessons with a bikini on because, I mean, a bikini serves a purpose and a regular swimsuit (laughs) serves a purpose. So it's like you kind of have to understand where you're at and what you're going for. Um, And, you know, when the water does get in your hair, just make sure that you care for your hair in the right way. Um, I get how big of a deterrent it is for people um, because it can seem very inconvenient. Mm -hmm. Um, And, you know, with like my hair type, once I get in the water, if it's straightened, oh, it's curly. And so I think if you're someone who wears your hair straight a lot, you're just going to have to come to the terms with, hey, even if I wrap my hair, I do all this type of stuff, um, it's still going to get wet. And I think that the experience that I have swimming outweighs the annoyance of the water getting Mm. in my hair and so I just kind of had to be okay with hey this is something that's going to happen um and honestly I probably if I just had my hair out and you know my big afro or whatever I would probably just swim like that because it's I think I've gotten to a point with swimming where it's freeing (laughs) now just to kind of jump in and do the whole thing and I think that even when I'm like you know in the pool and I have my swim cap on I feel very like ready to swim and I've got my, I've got my outfit and I'm here and I'm suited up. Um, So I think it's just something you've kind of got to just come to terms with that it will happen and it's okay. Um, Your hair getting wet is not the problem. It's your hair staying wet and getting dry. That is the Mm -hmm. issue. Mm -hmm. Getting dried out afterwards. Yeah. 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 Got it. Well, and I like this. It is really a conversation that you're having with yourself before you go. 
of, Mm -hmm. like you say, coming to terms with what is okay? What's my plan? Um, Yeah, we had a student, Bethany, she, after she did her classes, she was going to Thailand for a couple of weeks. Mm -hmm. And she did on the last day of class, she came with all her berets, like she had gotten her hair done. And she's, she literally went from the last day of class to the airport. Oh, wow. (laughs) (laughs) And then sent me a video of her three days later in the ocean. Like, (laughs) um, but yeah, so she's like, I'm just, I'm just doing it like this. So it's easy to take care of and um, doesn't have to be forever this particular style. But when I'm doing a lot of swimming, it's for that. Yeah. 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 And it's, I think that's also the thing is like, if you're preparing to make swim a part of your regular routine, um, then it is a, it is a larger question, you know, and, and I think that is where it becomes a little difficult to make that right call. So for me, I have decided like, I want to be swimming, you know, quite often and I want to make it a part of what I do. Um, and so wearing the wigs and the braids is much easier than if I was wearing, you know, a flat iron and that would be very difficult to manage a swim lifestyle with a flat iron. It just wouldn't be very practical. Um, But I think that is okay. And I think coming to terms with knowing that is okay as well. Just like if you were a wrestler, you wouldn't have hair down to your butt because it's an easy thing to pull. So it's kind of like if something is going to be a part of your lifestyle, you have to accommodate other areas in your life to be comfortable with that. Um, And I think that's just a personal decision that each person is going to have to make inevitably. Um, Because wearing braids forever can be very damaging to your hair as well. Um, But that goes for any style that we do, you know, too much, it's going to become annoying at some point. So you just kind of have to figure it out. Um, But I think the bigger thing with swimming is that it's an easy excuse to say, I don't swim because I don't want to get my hair wet. Mm. Um, But it's an excuse that culturally we've been brought up to believe is valid. And I think that is a larger deterrent than hair. It's really, we've been taught that, oh, you don't get your hair wet. You don't jump in the water. You don't experience that freedom. Um, Even when we shower, it's a very different experience. You know, I don't stand in the shower with like my full body getting wet and just X, Y, and Z. I'm normally showering kind of like, you know, you're, you're not getting everything in there. Mm -hmm. And that's, that's literally from youth. (laughs) That is what we're taught. I mean, I can remember watching my little cousins and, you know, we're getting ready for church or whatever the case may be. And I'm, you know, I'm like, Hey, go get in the shower. And like, I remember one time, one of them like got her hair super wet. And I was just like, why? would you do this? And I like completely exploded, not realizing like, hey, she's in the shower. Like, you know, she doesn't understand, like, don't get your hair wet because now we have to do it all over. Uh Um, And so if you've been taught from a child to not get your hair wet, um, or more important is that if you get your hair wet, it is not as attractive. That's really, that's really the deeper root of it all. Um, so when you start to, when you're an adult and you're making decisions around intentionally getting your hair wet, it's kind of a conflict of, I guess, values, honestly, because it's like, whoa, this is really foreign (laughs) for me. Um, and so I think, the and one of the cool things that I liked about the swim lessons is you have to be comfortable being uncomfortable and I think if you're someone like me who culturally has grown up feeling like getting your hair wet was less attractive or just not the thing to do um in the swim lessons you get comfortable with literally just having your face wet Mm -hmm. and that's a really big thing because that's not something we do every day Um, and so in the same light you have to get comfortable with getting your hair wet you have to get comfortable with those new experiences because they open the door so many to many other great experiences Um, and you don't get those if you don't get past those barriers and I think that they're very valid barriers to have and honestly like it's really cool to do this um conversation with you because it's something that we know that black women don't like to get their hair wet or most women don't like to get their hair wet but in particular women of color do not like to get their hair wet um and it's not a taboo thing it's something that we all are aware of and it's something that should not be as coveted information Mm. um it should be like we get it 
it's a thing, but here's what you can do. Um, and it's just something you're going to have to figure out because once you figure it out, you're now exposed to this new lifestyle of, you know, fun and freedom right, and right. all that type of stuff. Um, nice, nice. So yeah, so I think it's a cool conversation. Sorry, go ahead, Corey. Oh no, I was just gonna say I really love how my my speaker's echoing back funny here. I really love how you are talking about um it's not just about the hair wet, like it has to do with this deeper down identity stuff. Mm-hmm. And you know, if I'm gonna uh, make the decision and the choice to get my hair wet you know, am I disappointing my mom, Mm -hmm. (laughs) you know, from her when I was a little kid saying, ah, what are you doing? You know? Yeah, exactly. And I mean, this is something you don't think about like in your conscious brain, but you react to it. You have this visceral reaction to it and it takes a little bit of uncovering to be like, oh yeah, that's what it's connected to, to this Mm -hmm. thing in the past. But I'm a grown up now. I can, I can recognize that, notice that, talk about it and make a decision today. I'm not five years old anymore. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. And, you know, the identity piece um, is particular for women of color and African-American descent is that when your hair is wet and curly, it is not as desirable as when it is straight. So if you go swimming and your hair is straight and that's what you see every day is your identity of beauty and now you're swimming and now your hair looks like this image that you may not yourself be comfortable with, that's a whole deeper thing as well. Because now you're literally learning a whole new person um, and a whole new person and what they look like and what they feel like and how they feel confident in themselves. And so I think that learning swimming has a lot of internal, there's a lot of internal strife that you deal with when you're learning to swim. And um, honestly, I think that's what keeps a lot of the African-American community from doing it um, is because it's such a foreign thing. <laughs> like It's just literally <laughs> such a foreign thing um, for us to do, especially as adults, you know, because the when I'm dealing with clients that are, you know, like, hey, I'm a swimmer and I want to wear wigs, but um, wigs is actually the best thing for swimming because you can have your hair braided and you can still do your different looks that you want to do. Yeah. But the question is always like, you know, cause I have a job and I want to, I still want to look like myself and I'm like, mm-hmm. well, you look like yourself just because you're yourself, but I get what you're saying, but okay. <laughs> you know? <laughs> and so it's like, okay. And you know, I never, I would never be like, but you're yourself either way, but whatever, you know, but it's, it's, Literally, that's how you feel. You do not feel like you're yourself because you've transformed and you look different. Mm -hmm. Um, But it's a good conversation to have. Exactly. That's the deeper transformation. I get to be me no matter what. And I mean, it's something that we all have to deal with. I'm thinking just in terms of like aging. This Mm -hmm. is, we are all aging and our bodies change. And yeah, but we're still who we are even as these changes happen. And lots of people have that tension relationship as things change in their life. That's, that's hard. So it's a really good conversation to have. What, what is really makes you, you, and you still get to be you Mm -hmm. no matter what. Yeah, Yeah. exactly. Exactly. Yeah. It's, I can't say that I know exactly what I'll do with my hair as I'm like, you know, I want to inevitably be swimming like at least once a week. Like I want to go to the gym and, you know, do the pool and, you know, really figure that out. Um, And I think as I take more swim lessons, I'll probably get there, but it's like, I still think about like, okay, well, what do you do if your hair is out? you know, and you can't, I have really, really big hair um, Mm -hmm. and you can't get a swim cap over your hair. What do you do? Um, if you have a busy day ahead and you don't want to just get your hair wet because, you know, it's another thing. I can't just take a towel and just be like, all right, <laughs> we're going for the we're day. Done. Like, no, that's a whole process, you know? And so I have been thinking about that um, consciously and making a conscious decision for what I want to do and how I would do that. Um, I don't have a definitive answer right now. Like I said, wigs are a great option, but I don't have a, this would work the best way for me um, without any friction. Yeah. I think either way there's going to be friction, Um, but I'm okay with that because I enjoy what swimming teaches me and what it brings to me as a person and for my life. Right, right. Well, you know, I do that too. I've been condensing my... Wait, I lost you again. Oh. Okay, you're back. Okay. Um, You know, I think about it too in terms of condensing when I teach. So... Mm -hmm. 
today is my wet day. <laughs> and so I just know like, all right, I'm going to be wet today and I'm going to wear the sweatpants today, you know, for me, cause I'm in, you know, maybe in and out, in and out a bunch in a day or something like that. Yeah. But then I need to schedule dry days for myself. So mm -hmm. things like I don't have to take a shower today or I don't, um, shoot, I think I'm at a loss uh -huh. again. There we go. Yeah. I okay. don't know. Sorry, that might be me. Yeah, that's right. Anyways, I mean, it is, um, it's a, nor it's a normal thing. I mean, and even you can think of it, there is friction, but I'm sure this is true planning when you're going to do a workout, right? When I'm going to get mm -hmm. all sweaty and what time of the day am I going to do that, that it fits into the rest of my life, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I can exactly. find that good time at the end of the day or the beginning of the day and then get dressed for the day or, you know, whatever it is. Right. Yeah. 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 Yeah, I think it's just any decision you make, there are, you know, good options and less good options and options that just don't work. Um, but if it's important, you figure it out. Um, and I don't think your hair should be a deterrent from you learning how to swim because what you gain from learning how to swim is so much, it's, it's so much more than just hair. Um, so yeah, I think, I think that's the, the biggest thing is just don't let that be a reason, um, you know stuff you got to deal with. None of us like paying taxes, but we do. <laughs> so <laughs> it's one of those things that, you know, we don't like it, but you know, it's something that you just have to come to terms with. That's okay. This is just the way that this world works. And all right, you know. Yeah. Yeah. And then you notice when you have to call 911 and the firefighter comes, you're like, okay, well that piece of taxes was worth it. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. It's, it's the exact same thing, you know? So yeah, I mean, hair is, hair is what it is. Um, I think swimming is what it is. I can definitely say that after taking, um, your course, I don't have as much hesitancy or pause around it. Um, I'm fine with it just being you know, one of the pieces of it. And I think that's the cool thing about how you teach the class is that if I'm able to change the way that I feel about water, then I'm able to change the decisions that I make about that experience. Um, so I think if you've never had a swim instruction or experience like this one, um, the other swim lessons, definitely, you would not have that type of like, mind body soul interaction and you know the decision changing shift and all that probably not um mm. so i think that this class definitely helps you just walk away from some of those myths and fears that you previously had which hair is probably one of them yeah yeah good well thank you so much i keep um <clears throat> as we're having this conversation i keep holding in my heart a conversation i had with another one of our students um a couple weeks ago She's 85 mm -hmm. and she took the lessons last month and she is amazing. And um, she said when she was a little girl that uh, she actually had swimming lessons, but they had swimming lessons just before charm school. Oh my gosh. <laughs> wow. And at that time, you know, you can think about, she's 80, actually she's 86, her birthday's this week, you know, wow. um, hair having uh flat iron hair i mean that was yeah, a really big that was deal, a I big think. thing yeah yeah and i thought oh poor little thing you know the little girl nobody was there to help her with that yeah um so i'm really glad i keep just holding her in my heart and mm -hmm. i'm really glad that we get to have this conversation and put it out for people to be able to know yeah there is a place for you here yeah and um this is and i love it having the conversation we don't need to hide from it just get it out right. there yeah, I mean, it is what it is, and I think that's the problem, is that the conversation is not had. Um, even, like, people would DM me, hey, what'd you do with your hair, versus just saying it on the status as if I was, like, <laughs> not going to answer the question, or I was going to be embarrassed of the question, and I'm like, no, this is, you know, it, this is what I did, this is how I wore it. Um, hey, you know, it's fine. So these conversations are necessary, and they're needed to, you know, progress things in the area that they should go and to help other people get over their fears and preconceived notions, which are probably not right anyways. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. We get layered on with all these things that we think are truths and then we come and find out, wait a second, I actually can't get to the bottom of the pool. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's a lot harder than I thought. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right. <laughs> so. 
go. Good. All right. Well, thank you so much. I really appreciate your time. I appreciate your openness to being a student and your open heart of learning and coming back and helping spot. That was awesome. Yeah, yeah. for sure. For sure. This has been, a, I'm really glad that I found you guys at school. It's been awesome. So Good. anything Good. to help, I am down to do. Okay. Thank you so much, Keisha. Have a All great right. day. Thanks, Corey. Bye. Bye. Thanks for listening. Are you ready to take some action? Three ways to the freeway. Subscribe, join a free webinar, get started online where we break down the steps, making them simple, and we support you along the journey. So maybe you'll join us in Hawaii. Jump on over to orcaswimschool.com.